Hello everybody, it's time for tab review. Tabs in my browser, whatever you want to call it, you know. I got two books I have read. Uh, one I read quite recently, uh, Unix, A History and a Memoir by Brian Kernighan. Uh, Brian Kernighan, everyone knows, uh, one of the authors of Orc, for instance. The K in Orc is Kernighan. Uh, this is uh, his story of Unix because he was there from the start uh, working on the core Unix team. He was even like, uh, well, I, I, I'm not 100% sure on the exact title and it's kind of complicated, the company structure and everything. But he, he was like uh, one of the main guys in the Unix uh, team, in the Unix room. And he was there from the start, you know, uh, 1969. And this is his story about uh, that time and the times following, because he stayed at Bell Labs till uh, 2005 or something, or maybe even later. He, he was there for uh, the whole time, you know. Uh, and it's a very good uh, um, story on the history of Unix um, and his take on it. It's very much a love story, you know, but also uh, very honest and, and what happened, you know, the, the, the really nasty things that happened with Unix, especially in, in the mid-late 80s, uh, uh, about licensing and, and, and things like that. And I think, I think th this was like an excellent book and so many small things I didn't know about, uh, the, the, both a fun and enlightening uh, read and also an easy read. It's, it, it's kind of a short book and very easy to read because Kernighan is, is, a, is an excellent uh, uh, author. He has written many other books. Uh, uh, the most famous one is, of course, uh, the C programming language book, which he co-wrote with uh, Dennis Ritchie, which was also part of the Unix core team, of course. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, highly highly recommend that book. Um, it's available on Amazon in paper book, back and ebook formats and whatever you can find it if you want it, you know. Uh, and that book is an uh, excellent complement to this book, which is a read I, I did like a couple of years ago. Feels like I might have mentioned this in a previous video in this tabs. Uh, tab review uh, uh, things, but I couldn't find it here now, so I mention it anyways again, because it's just such a, a, a great book about, uh, th this is the story about Bell Labs, uh, and I remember when I read this, I, I picked it up because I wanted to know more about like the origins and history of Unix, really. But this book doesn't really cover that much Unix. Uh, Unix is just a footnote in the story of Bell Labs, and when you have read this book, you understand that that is really the case, you know, uh, and that is why this book is so great. This uh, Unix uh, uh, history of history and a memoir of Unix, because that focuses on only on Unix, and but this is the whole story of Bell Labs. But uh, nevertheless, this is also a very very in interesting read. It's such a, a weird and special uh, thing, this Bell Labs, the research and development wing of AT&T. And really short here, AT&T, you know, that was the telephone company of America. Or it probably is, I'm not sure exactly what AT&T is now and uh, not Bell Labs either. But uh, throughout the whole 20th century, uh, AT&T had, had a monopoly uh, on the telephone market in America. And just imagine the telephone market in America, that's not a small uh, market. And having a monopoly on that, uh, <laughs> that, that, that is uh, kind of a special, unique thing that we haven't really uh, uh, anything similar to. And I, was th I have been thinking a bit about this and you know, the most similar thing right now is probably Google, you know, and that is probably also why, or probably also why, but many former Bell Labs employees are no now at Google, uh, because I think they are somewhat uh, uh, similar environments. But with that said, that doesn't mean any of them are good really. Monopolies are not good and, and this book really 
uh, highlights uh, both both the Im amazing inventions uh, that was made uh, at Bell Labs. You know, you have researchers as Claude Shannon, like uh, one one of the smartest uh, people ever, who uh, created what's it called information theory, IT. You know, uh, he was there. They also invented the transistor. Uh, Shockley and his team, you know, and that is very, very, very interesting uh, to read about how that was invented in 1948. And uh, in my opinion, that is the most uh, that is the invention that made the biggest uh, uh, mark uh, on our whole world, really. For, uh, in the 19th uh, century. It's not the computer, it's not the TV, it's not the telephone, it is the transistor. It was it was an, a, a really, really special device that we are still using very much today. I have probably a billion transistors here uh, running right now. Maybe more. I, I, I don't even know anymore, you know. Whatever. Very, very good read. Highly recommend it. And, but recommend this even more. But if you have read, especially if you have read this, then you definitely have to read this. But if you have, re have read this and then feel, hey, that Bell Labs place, look, I want to know more, then you can read this. Or whatever. I highly recommend both of those books. Then I also highly recommend this channel that I just stumbled upon a couple of days ago. This video was uploaded like uh, four or five days ago here. Uh, it is uh, Daniel Stenberg, which is um, the maintainer, author, creator of Curl. And Curl, uh, as you know, is uh, probably the most used uh, software in the world. Uh, at least the top three most used and installed softwares. Uh, and it, it's like a really, really a success story of, an, of a real open source uh, software you know and it's you know daniel stenberg he has been the maintainer author uh, of the program since 1996 the release of it it's kind of similar to linux where linus was the head of of um, of linux for forever you know now i'm not really sure what's going on you know but whatever um but this is a long video here uh, with a lot of statistics, but it's really fun. And if you are the type of person I am, I, I just like to watch statistics like this, you know, lines of code, the growth of lines of code here. Uh, it's just uh, interesting that the line is so straight, isn't it? Uh, and 170,000 lines uh, they are uh, using right now. But uh, a lot of other interesting statistics, like 132 command line options uh, installed on over 70 operating systems, where Linux counts as one operating system. And great video, and also a great channel here, because Daniel has uploaded more videos, uh, like... Um, I really like these types of videos, where you um, can, can uh, see how professionals uh, develop code, you know, some of this really long here, th <laughs> three and a half hour. But um, even if you don't understand all the code they write, it's, it, it gives you some, some good ideas and insight on how to, uh, how their workflow and, and, uh, and, and things like that is, you know, and that is, I find that stuff very interesting and, and um, helpful to, to watch. So, Daniel Stenberg, underrated YouTube channel, Curl, very great, cool software, makes me proud to be Swedish, which is uh, not that common nowadays. Next up, we have Nibbler. <laughs> Nibbler, I just found this because I was researching uh, games, you know, simple games uh, for, yeah, the, the YouTube stuff I, I've been doing lately here. Um, yeah, how to eat an apple in a terminal. I'm, I, I want to create like a simple game here in a terminal game in Bash. And I thought maybe we should do um, Snake. 
and everyone knows what snake is, you know, but I wanted to find some data uh, on, on snake, like um, some exact numbers on how often the levels changes and the speed and w blah, 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 you know. And when I was doing that research, I stumbled upon this game Nibbler, which is was released in 1982, a great year. Um, and it's like some arcade game. Looks extremely boring, like a much more, like, a combination of Pac-Man and Snake, so you move the snake in a, a specific maze like this, you know. Uh, but the, the unique thing with this game was that it was the first game where you could score more than one billion points. <laughs> and to do this, you had to play the game. You, remember, this is an arcade game, you know, where, where you put coins in it and you play for a while and then you die and then you play some other game, you know. But if you, if you manage to stay alive on that coin for long enough, you can score 1 billion points. Uh, how long do you have to play the game to, to, to score this? Uh, the first, world, first time that happened was uh, Tim McVeigh, and he, he played for 44 hours. And you know, that's 44 hours straight. Uh, it's not a real record if you pause the game, you know, you cannot do that. Uh, so it takes about 44 to 50 hours to, to get get to this level, you know. Uh, and not many people have reached this. There are like three uh, per people who officially have, have scored more than 1 billion points. <clears throat> and my guess is that not that many people have tried, you know. Just imagine getting to like 750 million. <laughs> you have played for 30 hours and then you get like bad luck or whatever. And you die, you know. It's not like, oh, I want to do this again. You, you, you will probably never ever touch this game again. And it doesn't look that difficult, you know. This many of these old arcade games, they they are really really difficult, like Pac-Man and, and Donkey Kong and things like that. But the challenge here is to just stay awake and stay sane for for all these forty four hours. Uh, ju just weird and it's it's a really weird story here with this Italian player who also got the record or, or who even beat uh, Tim McVeigh but his uh, record was not officially recognized and things like that. Uh, there is a movie about this, uh, Man vs. Snake. I didn't know about this. Uh, it was uh, released uh, 2016 and uh, the movie may or may not be available on YouTube. I will not say more than that, but you know. Uh, and I watched it, uh, and it was uh, it was it was fascinating. Uh, the whole thing, you know. I didn't know about it, but I didn't really think the movie was uh, super duper great. You know, it was kind of really good animations and things like that, but uh, in my opinion, uh, way too long and. Not that much action, you know, but I guess that's the, just how, how a movie about this game <laughs> turns out. It's it's difficult to make it uh, uh, interesting, I guess. But uh, a decent score here on on IMDb and whatever. I watch it if you if if you're interested. But a much better movie uh, in the same genre is uh, King of Kong, of course, uh, featuring uh, the infamous. Uh, uh, Billy Mitchell, which is also featured in this movie, because oh, Tim McVeigh, he actually lives in the same city as uh, um, Twin Galaxies, uh, the arcade is located, and he actually makes that uh, world record on the Twin Galaxies uh, arcade, and Billy Mitchell also lives in that city, and he appears uh, in the movie, but uh, Billy Mitchell is uh, both famous for the King of Kong, but he's also famous uh, for having his world records in Donkey Kong and, and Pac-Man disqualified after people have found out he had been cheating on some videos. I don't think he was cheating on the original high scores. I think it's kind of uh, uh, wrong that they disqualified his old high scores because they weren't really related to, to those uh, uh, findings. But, you know, Billy Mitchell is the kind of person that it, Everyone is happy when he's he's get disqualified because he's <laughs> yeah whatever. Uh, 
it's just a fascinating scene. I, I'm a little bit too young, you know, to relate to these guys. Uh, I, I never really played arcade games, uh, but I'm not... <laughs> they are not that much older than me. Uh, it's just a, a generation behind me or before me. Uh, but this movie is very good uh, in my opinion and you have probably watched it it, it, it was uh, kind of a big hit for being this type of movie when it came out um, King of Kong highly recommend this one Nibbler I don't know if I can recommend it really but it exists and it is something I recently <laughs> watched and stumbled upon and last, uh, we have this uh, strange random uh, archive channel I found on uh, YouTube. It's called the Kino Library. And they just upload like loads and loads of, I don't know what kind of footage it, it is. I don't know where it comes from. It's very random, but just, uh, uh, um, I cannot stop watching these clips. It can be anything. 1950s Germany Hamburg train station policeman. Uh, 1999 London Hackney Wick squat, squat party illegal rave. 1980s Vancouver shopping in Chinatown. It can be <laughs> anything. It's so so random uh, and it's very real. Uh, it feels very real, you know. It's really fun to watch these uh, like. Uh, uh, from the 70s and even older uh, movies because you can really see that people people uh, uh, react to the camera it's it's like what what is that weird thing you know he, he have a camera oh my god he have a camera you know it's uh, very different from today when cameras are just everywhere it, it feels weird when you're not uh, being recorded you know um, but it's it's very 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 fascinating uh, 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 clips and it's like it's not like um, interviews or sometimes it can be but it's mostly just like footage you know um, sometimes there aren't even sound on them and often it's just like footage of people doing um, somewhat everyday things you know often it is from events and things like that so it's not like completely everyday but sometimes it's just like Footage from a shopping mall, people going around shopping or whatever. I don't know. Thank you for watching this uh, video. Um, I think I will do Snake. We will turn our apple eating game into Snake. We will not turn it into Nibbler. We, we, we don't will want to create a, a, a game that takes 44 hours to, to play, you know. But um, we take that. In the next video have a great day everybody bye 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 uh, let's press the right button